again, an LSTM is pretty much just like an RNN in that it has a recurrent, um, a you know, it's it's a version of a recurrent neural network where the the output of one layer feeds back into the input for the next time step, and so it allows you to to take a look at sequential data. It's usually it's 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 yeah, we'll just the the, the different steps are usually just called time steps. So for LSTM, it's pretty much the same thing except that it um it it, it incorporates a memory called the cell state. So that cell state pretty much just passes along. This current time step will manipulate the cell state. The next time step will, will manipulate the time step as well, yada, yada, yada. So the cell state is essentially just the memory for LSTMs. And so when we go through, there are, diff there are a few things that we that, we, that get added. So the first one is a forget gate. So the forget gate, just, just as its name hints towards, the cell state is over here and so the forget gate just controls what gets removed from that cell state again cell state's the memory right so that's that and then here what we have is we have an input gate so an input gate so so this is actually pretty pretty interesting here so in this current time step you know see we have the current input and we also have the output from the previous time step and so once the two of them come together and we we manipulate them for the current time step we then have a choice the choice is do we keep that in the cell state or not. And so that's what this part is doing. This part determines whether or not we actually go ahead and we keep it in the cell state. Whereas this part over here just determines, you know, what's the value. So again, once we, again, it's just a combination of this current time step plus the previous time step. And so you just combine them and you just manipulate them. So that's what this is doing here. And then this over here just determines whether or not, whether or not we keep it in memory or we just leave it alone and we discard it. So that's what that does. So now over here, what we're doing is so we so we had the we we had the we have FT remember again FT was our forget gate we have CT remember again CT was just what we discussed over here which is the current time step plus the previous time step output that get manipulated together and so this is kind of like a, a candidate for what the new cell state should be but we don't want to overwrite the cell state completely and so that's why we have I which just indicates whether or not we should actually go ahead and input that value into the cell state. What we're doing here is we're just combining all of them together to give us our, our new cell state for this current time period. And then we pass that cell state, we pass it to the future uh, or to the next time step. So then finally what we do is then we just fi we finally get our outputs from this current time period. So the, the output is the whatever we have or whatever we input it to this time step again, plus what we had previous time step. And what we're doing is, so that's what we, that's what we have over here, and that's OT. And then what we're doing is we're now combining it with the cell state, with the data we have in memory, and then that forms the new output for the current time step. So that's that. And then, you know, there's other variations of, of, of an LSTM. So there's one called the peephole, and the peephole essentially, so if you remember up here, these different gates, so the forget gate, the input gate, the new cell state candidate, as I like to call it, and then the output gate. What you realize is that they're all influencing the cell state, but none of them really know what's going on in the cell state. So that's exactly what peephole is. So peephole, it, it gives them access to what to, to be able to read what's in the cell state. And so then they just use that to determine what to do next, to determine whether to forget, to determine whether or not I want to input um, and to determine whether what should be outputted from from the current uh, in the current time step. And so now that we have kind of the broad overview of what an LSTM is. There's something called a GRU and stands for gated recurrent unit for like the one person who's interested. Uh, and, and essentially what it does is that it just combines the forget and input gates into a simple, into a, to one singular update gate. And that just has the effect of just making the math simple and there are fewer weights to calculate. And so it, 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 it takes less resources to run and update and yada, yada, yada. So that's, that's kind of the effect. So it's just more efficient, right? And that's kind of the benefit of it.